So this is a light stick demo. So, so what I have here is a, is, a, is a typical glow stick. Here's one that's been going for a little while, so it's running low and it's not going very well. Uh, and inside of the glow stick, there are two kind of key components, or three components really. There's a die that's going to give off a specific color of light, in this case yellow. And then there's also a, a chemical in there uh, called the dioxalate that's going to undergo a chemical reaction that's going to give energy to that dye, and that's going to cause the dye to give off light. And then also in there is a, is a glass tube filled with hydrogen peroxide. So when I snap this, what I'm really doing is I'm breaking that tube of peroxide, okay, which then mixes with the dioxalate, and the two react, and they transfer energy to that dye, which gives off that color. And you can compare that there's definitely a noticeable difference here. But what I want to do today is a little demo. I want to take this glow stick. Actually, I'm going to cut off the cap of it, and I'm going to pour the contents into this test tube, and then I'm going to heat it up. So at the bottom of this, you'll notice a whole bunch of really good questions attached in a Google document about this demo, and then my answers to them. Um, and there's a lot of really good conceptual chemistry that we can get into with these light sticks. Okay, so let's pour this in. Looks like I actually saved the glass. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to light this Bunsen burner and I'm going to heat up dye. So if you look at this right now and then right after I put this underneath, the change in light is really, really brilliant. Actually, take the flame off. I'm gonna put the lights on and see if that can focus a little better. So I'm going to keep letting this run, and what's going to happen after about a minute to two minutes is that the actual uh, amount of peroxide is going to be gone. So stoichiometrically, this is limited by that, and that's going to shut off the reaction, which is then going to stop the dye from fluorescing. Now, if I put a UV light up to this afterwards, that dye is still there, and it'll still fluoresce under the UV light. Um, but without the chemical reaction giving it light, it won't, it won't show the chemiluminescence that we're seeing now.